So let's start with we're gonna do we're gonna start with the tea party and the tea party for those who are not human, and then we're gonna go over the tips for episode three. So mm -hmm. we we will don't don't worry we're gonna cover everything, and we'll run we'll run off our theories and stuff as we do it. Tea time. Tea time. I don't have tea. I have got another thing of coke. May I have a sip of that, please? By all means. Tech, do it first. Just kidding. It was witch piss. <laughs> <laughs> Slurps even harder. <laughs> I never expected Lady Burncastle's piece to barge in at the very end. I searched all over the place for a piece fitting for a game with you. I was sure you like it. Did we? Did we give? Did we give me? Uh, what's uh, Lambda Delta? Lambda Delta? Yeah, we did. Do you want to take we? Lambda Delta? Yeah, go for it. Sure. I forget what I was doing. Just though. give her something bombastic and sassy. What's with that piece? Who was that person? Who was it? She didn't say her name. That's mean. <laughs> hey, don't you think so too? Clearly, you didn't watch the credits. I have a general idea. Or rather, I imagine most people looks directly at camera, camera. would have figured it out. <laughs> Most people! Well, I don't get it, and it was that character's first appearance, wasn't it? If she doesn't say her name, I won't understand. The players won't understand. No one will understand, right? Hetzo, so, don't bother telling her. See? Isn't she a funny kid? <laughs> Indeed. Lady Lambda Delta's innocent airhead side is truly precious and amusing. Did we see what these two look like with the... Oh, we did. How come Banjo's the only witch who's an adult? Yeah, huh. That doesn't sit right with me. I mean, Virgilia. Virgilia! Thank you. Alright, I'll accept it. <clears throat> come on, come on, why won't you tell only me, you meanie? In exchange, I'll teach you a special secret that only I know. So tell me! Oh. <laughs> a special secret, you say. I wanna hear, I wanna hear. You couldn't see it, but I was... I can confirm she was indeed doing the play. If you want me to tell you, first tell me who that girl really was. The secret I know sure is awesome. After all, it's about as awesome as knowing that Santa-san is actually daddy. Huh? <laughs> I said it. Sorry. I'll bet you're so shocked that it turned your world upside down, right? <laughs> So your father was the one who came to your place, Lambda. He ca- Wait. What do you mean? Lord Santa Claus only visits the home of children with pure hearts. I guess he didn't come to your place, did he? <laughs> well- Unless she's pure evil! Hey! <laughs> well, Lord Santa Claus is gracious. Unless you're a really bad scoundrel, he'll give you a present. After all, he even gave them to me, and I suck! Have you met me? I'm just a real piece of shit, and I got presents. As you grow and your heart is hardened, he's supposed to stop coming, right? How old were you, Beato, when he stopped coming? Indeed. He kept coming until I was about 12. When my maiden's heart awoke, I quickly got somewhat embarrassed about Lord Santa coming. <sighs> yeah, that fits. After I wrote, thanks for everything, that's enough. So make sure you splurge on the last set of presents. He stopped coming. <laughs> oh, and I was looking forward to it too. <laughs> what is that? How old were you when he stopped coming, Lady Verncastle? He never did. <laughs> I was pretty wild. It happened fairly early. I think when I was about nine. Something about that beer really irritated me. So I waited in front of my futon with some sewing, <laughs> trying to cut it off. What a painful age. So, as far back as Lady Lambda Delta can remember, Lord Santa Claus never came to see her, Why huh? are we sitting around talking about Santa? Okay. He usually comes until the last year of elementary school, or during middle school. Maybe we should take her to a doctor. I that being too precocious can have negative side effects on the growth of mind and body. Yeah, you can definitely see some of those. Those negative side effects. Hey, what are you people talking about? 
Ah! <laughs> uh, it truly is boisterous when three witches gather. Say that word again. What word? Boisterous. Boisterous? More like girlsterous. Got him. Got him. Bump me. Yeah, that's right, Beto. <laughs> You're talking about a secret on that level. I doubt this will be worth listening to. Can I go now? I have to get ready for the next game. Also, I repaired your controllers for you. They're not warranty covered anymore, but... I mean, honestly, they're probably better off this way, so... <laughs> I'll bill you for the kit I had to buy to... <laughs> it's, it still winds up cheaper in the long run, but it, like... I also, like, it's, like, my time investment, and I feel like that's worth something, so... <laughs> well, hey, wait a sec! Tell me who that woman really was. Well then, tell me the special fucking secret of yours first. If it's good enough, then I'll tell you. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you, because it really is a special secret. Remember, in this game, there was a girl who found the gold and became the new witch, right? <sighs> yeah. Indeed. And just what kind of secret might that person have? <laughs> I figured out who that girl really is. Does anyone know? <laughs> there was a hint in the way she talked. Remember, that girl said it a lot, didn't she? If only you'd just... Blah, right? Yeah, that phrase is the key point. If only. If only. If only. Yes. She was actually... <laughs> Ushiromia Ava. Oh. Oh, okay. We're the... Oh. Okay. Oh my that god, Lambda Delta is such a dumbass! I love who? her! Isn't she supposed to be from Higarashi? Who? Lambda Delta? You, one of these witches is... you mentioned is... Nah? No? Why am I hallucinating that? I... you... I can't explain how that is true. Okay. I can't explain how that is true. Okay, fine. The, I guess. the answer is maybe? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> what do you think? Are you shocked? <laughs> <sighs> I never noticed that. Uh, to think that there would be a hint in a place like that. You're a real good sport, Pietro. This kid tends to get full of herself, so try not to overdo it. See you. I'm leaving. Wait, wait! It's not fair if you just listen to my secret and don't tell me yours. Tell me who she really was. <sighs> Your secret was so amazing that mine just wouldn't match up. So in exchange, I'll teach you a special secret. I'll tell you the name of the culprit in this game called Higurashi no Naku Koro ni. Wait, what? Wait, will they? I'm worried. I don't think he... I don't think they do that. Okay, so here's the thing. It still won't make sense even if they tell you. Okay, okay, fine. <laughs> ah, don't say it. I'm still playing it. <laughs> <sighs> See you, Beto. The black tea was delicious. However, the repertoire of jam on the crackers was lacking. Add some Guchong, Guchuang jelly paste every once in a while. It goes great with Russian tea. Later, bitch. What a confusing taste, putting Korean chili paste in the jam for your crackers with black tea. That said, I'm going to try it. I was going to say, you are absolutely going <laughs> yeah. to do that. <laughs> oh, I see. I shall try it. I'll call for some after preparing the next game. Until then, feel free to polish up your strategy at your leisure. I even have the strategy guide around somewhere. Oh, um, could you... Don't, don't show that to her. It just make her <laughs> Yeah, I'll do that. This last game was pretty interesting. Later, nerd. Hey, wait a sec! Tell me! <laughs> Turns to look at you. camera, then fucks right off. I like Bernie, she's great. <laughs> I also love that Bernie is definitely not on Battler's side. Yeah, she's just... Vaguely antagonistic towards Beato, and that sometimes might accidentally coincide with... But also, not even antagonistic towards Beato. They're all just hanging out and having a blast. She's just playing against her. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But it is just a game for Bernie. Mm. It is just a game, I think. <laughs> my, my, you two really are close. <sighs> yes, that's right. Oh, I really like you, Burncastle. 
You could even say I love you. I want to gouge out your eyes so that you see no one other than me. I heard that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be so wonderful. It'd be great to dunk them in black tea. <laughs> to think that you would be so entranced, Lady Lambda Delta. <laughs> I have a serious responsibility. Still, this last game really was close. I was a breath away from getting Battler. Beato, can I ask you something? What is it? I won't tell you that girl's name. <laughs> When are you going to stop fooling around? Are you even trying to win? Lambda Delta threatened her with a low voice that she had never used in front of Burn Castle. This is this is my low voice that's threatening. Oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Completely blew away the calm atmosphere that had been there until a moment ago. You know I'm supporting you because you're supposed to be a witch who can win against Burn Castle. If you don't have the power to win against her, I'll abandon you right away, okay? How harsh of you. What about me dissatisfies you? As you know, my game board is perfect. Lady Burncastle will never be able to win. Yeah, that's right. Your board truly is impressive. It truly is an impressive and perfect game board that Burncastle definitely won't be able to win in. Not even after a hundred years or even a thousand years. That's why I made you a witch in exchange for letting me borrow it. If I stop being your guardian, you'll immediately go back to being a human. Make sure you don't forget that, no matter how much incredible magic power you hold. You are nothing more than a temporary witch. What? What? <laughs> the fuck? Wheels within wheels, my dude! Every 07th expansion game is designed to turn you into a conspiracy theorist. Yeah, clearly! And give you, like, overwhelming delusions of reference. Oh like, my god, this is... <laughs> what I... the fuck is... Okay. Alright, sure. I guess... Sure. I, I understand. I'm grateful to you. Don't speak so casually to me. I'll forgive that when Burn Castle's around, but not when she isn't. <laughs> hey, hey, it's me. I just wanted to let you know that I'm still listening in. Piss! <laughs> I'll bet you've started to forget how much you owe me. That is not so. So she's dead it. So... Wait. Okay. So did that... So did... Is anything that we know about Beato's supposed ascension to being a witch true? Probably not. But also, is Beato really evil and plotting against Battler? Or just being used? Could her soft side be her real side? Could she still oh. have the charm point? <laughs> okay, hold Can on. we still have the gap, Moe? Oh my god. You really are disgusting. Go ahead and talk the way you usually do. But be mindful of what you say. I have a surprisingly short temper, you see. <sighs> Indeed. Let's get back to what we were discussing. Your game board truly is perfect. You should be able to defeat Burncastle without any trouble. But that kid won't surrender easily. She'll challenge you over and over. <sighs> that is no problem. It's been certified by you, Lady Lambda Delta. My game board is perfect. Yeah, that's right, it's perfect. But are you, the player, perfect as well? No. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> what do you mean by that? What do I mean? That's what I want to hear. You play around a lot in your game. Sometimes that ends up confusing Burncastle, so... At first I thought it was some special strategy of yours, but I get the feeling that's not quite true. Rather than toying with the opponent in a match you can win, you don't actually care whether you win or lose, right? <sighs> oh! Ridiculous, how could that be? You know what? Your role is to make Burncastle surrender, 
In other words, that means being the victor in this game for all eternity. As long as you keep trying to become the victor with certainty, then I'll give you my power as the Witch of Certainty. However, if you fight in a way that doesn't eliminate any possibility of your loss, that's a different story. Uh, of course this is a game. But but it doesn't work that way, right? Doesn't the magic that Beto uses have to have some a possibility of have to have some risk to it? Maybe. That's what that's what we thought, right? Maybe so. Uh, just as Lady Burncastle will lose when I win, I will sometimes lose when she wins. The possibility of loss always exists. Therefore, I will... <laughs> this is why you're useless. There's no need for you to be a game board. You just have to be a birdcage that can lock Burncastle up here for all eternity. So Lambda Delta's just trying to get Bernie out of the way of something? She... Not out of the way of something. She just wants Bernie. Uh huh? She wants a pet Bernie. Oh, yeah. What's the role of a birdcage? <laughs> she still has a path to the presidency, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Making certain the little bird inside never escapes. What's a birdcage worth if it has cracks that sometimes let a bird out? <sighs> of course, games exist for the purpose of winning. And it is impossible for me to lose. Therefore, I will continue to win, as you wish for all eternity. Good answer, that'll be fine. I'll allow you to play around and use fakes as part of your tactics. It ends up being useful during parts of this round. But you know what? If you make a move hoping for anything else other than victory, make sure you're prepared for something amazing, okay? <laughs> what is going on? I, I will not do such a thing, I swear it. Because originally, you weren't even a witch, and at any time, I'll remind you what a truly shabby creature you were. If you betray my expectations, that is. As soon as you do, you can look forward to a fun, fun punishment game. In the world of billions of fragments, I'll send you into the most miserable one and seal you there. You were already miserable to start with, so there's going to be some really miserable fragments out there for the picking. Uh, hold on, I gotta get this. More like a punishment game. Pass! <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Got him! The most sorrowful Beato. <sighs> Got him. Oh, I love you, Castle. Struggle in Beatrice's birdcage as much as you like. And over the course of a thousand years, realize you can no longer escape. And when you surrender, I'll train you so that you can't do anything other than cry in the palm of my hand. <laughs> Turbo gay? <laughs> Triple gay? This is like quadruple level gay. What tier of gay are we at? I don't know. Well, that was something interesting. That huh? was some interesting info. Oh, hey, Uncle Mion's here. Uncle Mion from Higurashi. <laughs> Achievement unlocked. Oh, that's crazy. I love you forever. Ooh. All right. Let's check out the tea party of those who are not human. That's interesting. Because we just had a tea party of those who were not human. Mm. That's true. I don't know if going to be like that. Twelve years later. <laughs> in a world where. Wait. Oh, 98, 98, 98. Whoa. We know what year it is now then. It happens in early October. Of, I forgot how to do math. 86. We knew that already. We knew it was in 86 and we knew we knew it was around October. I just couldn't remember the exact date. So I was trying to. I'm glad we switched characters because I'm the only one here stupid enough to play Lambda Delta, right? <laughs> we totally know exactly what year it happened. We, we I, of course, we know what year it happened. I, I didn't just remember the exact date. I knew it was somewhere around October, November. But, uh. I didn't fucking know. Anyway, a monotonous electric sound kept on repeating. The room was colored with hygienic tones. 
A hostile In other words, an emotionless white. That's a great phrase, hygienic tone. Mm -hmm, I love it. It was a room that a certain university hospital. Neither her doctors nor the person herself had any doubts that this room, which had a price so high, no other commoner could afford to spend a single night there, would be the last room she ever saw. Is this... Oh. Was the person on the bed Ava? Even if someone told you that was so, she was unbelievably aged and worn out. The well-built man in a suit watching in the corner near the door was having a whispered conversation through an intercom with someone outside. He was on guard, protecting Ava's person. Telling the person on the other end of the intercom to wait, he approached Ava's bed. Ava had been awake for a short while. However, she stared at a single point in empty space as though her mind was not in the same place. Mm -hmm. Anshan has arrived in the lobby below. And we get the... Fuck, that's gonna be <clears throat> important. Ah. Should we let her pass? For a long time, Ava didn't answer. However, bit by bit, her eyes began to regain their focus, and she gave a small nod, indicating that she didn't mind if they called Ange. It had been Ava who called her, and she was right on time. By this point, Ava would refuse anyone who wanted a meeting without an appointment. The room was dark, even though it was still light outside, because the curtains were always closed. There was always one garden waiting in the room, and three more waiting in the corridor in the lobby. What have you been doing for 12 years, Ava? They were all there to protect Ava's person. Eventually, there was the sound of a knock. Also, there was a message from the intercom that the guest's body check had been completed with no problems. The door was unlocked, then opened, and a high school-aged girl was standing there. Wait. Wait, that doesn't jive with how we... Yeah, that doesn't, does it? That's interesting. Because that would mean she was like, what? A kid, like five or six, right? Yeah. That doesn't jive with how we saw her at the end of... Chairman, Ange Son has arrived. Ava reacted and turned her face towards the guest. However, instead of reacting to the guard's call, maybe it would be better to say that she reacted to the smell of Ange's makeup. To being shut up in this room for so long, Ava was sensitive to even small changes in smell. Shut up in a room like Kinzo, huh? Hmm. So you came, Ange. Yep. Oh, that's interesting. The version that we saw is exactly the high school age version. Yes. That's yes, that's weird. That's kind of what I was thinking. That's weird. As soon as they said that they might oh wait, so now we've seen her from this age, this age here in 1998. I came. You did call me. On Ava's face, there was no trace of a person warmly welcoming their niece. And on Ange's face, you couldn't see the expression of one pleased to meet with their aunt. Ava waved her arm, which had grown as thin as a withered branch, and motioned for the guard to leave. The guard bowed silently and went out into the hall. It's not only stuffy, but dark, too. Can I open the curtains? Is your plan for that hitman you hired to shoot me through the window? I wish I could get hired to assassinate you. All I'd have to do is relax at home for a month, and the job would take care of itself. <laughs> Their discussion was quite morbid for an aunt and niece. However, they didn't look like they were joking. At the very least, Ava believed that someone was after her life. All of the Usharomia family's massive fortune had come into the possession of Usharomia Ava. It was said that this fortune also included the ten tons of hidden gold that Usharomia Kinzo was rumored to have hidden. While this vast wealth lay in Ava's cunning, sly, and suspicious hands, no one was able to complain, but it was rumored that as soon as it was passed on to Ange, it was no more than a young girl. Certain people were planning to snatch it away. By now, Ava and Ange were Kinzo's only descendants. If Ava died, all the wealth would go to Ange. And if Ange were then to then be killed as well, that wealth would go to the family of Ange's mother, Kyrie. Interesting. In this sense, not only Ava, but Ange as well. We're in a position where it wouldn't be odd at all for their life to be targeted by some unknown person. And Ava had hated Ange for a long time. This was because she knew that, after losing her only precious son, George, the inheritor of her own wealth would be none other than the girl who had been absent at that family conference 12 years ago, and who had survived. Ava shunned Ange, disliked her, and even hated her. She isolated Ange in a special school and separated her from the youth and happiness normal people have, trying to keep her as a pet until death. <laughs> However, Ava had succumbed to an incurable illness, and ironically, 
Her remaining life was estimated to be the same as Kinzo's had been at that family conference 12 years ago. Oh my god, I can't believe Ava got Ligma! <laughs> no! Not Ligma! <laughs> it runs in the family! <laughs> Both Ava and Ange hated each other. Even though they were each other's last blood relatives, they hated each other so much that they hoped the other would die quickly. And... Why did you go to all the trouble of calling for me? I don't have much time left. These quack doctors still can't detect any of the poison that's filling me up. I know. I'm sure it's some secret assassination drug used by the Soviet KGBs. Oh, I'm gonna be killed, I'm gonna be killed. Isn't that great? Very soon I will die. It will surely be quite a load off your back. What a pitiable person. This always happened. They immediately deviated from the main topic, distorting it into a more unsettling discussion. Ava, who was absolutely paranoid, believed that someone was always after her life. And in actual fact, after inheriting the vast wealth of the Ushiromiya family, she'd used wild methods just like Kinzo had done in the past, repeatedly making money by any means necessary and creating many enemies along the way. The massive supply of capital she had plunged aggressively by the businesses that were starting to have rapid growth making them buy it back at a high price under the guise of reconciliation. Ironically, it was the same type of action that her husband's company had been hit with 12 years ago. She repeated this constantly for 12 years. She also earned a lot of hatred. If her husband had heard of this from beyond the grave, he might have defended her, saying that the loneliness from losing her family fueled her actions. However, of all the people who knew her now, none would defend her. For some time, Ava eloquently spoke of how her life was being targeted listing off names of people who hated her, and staring at the fact that she still hadn't been killed. Even though Ange heard her own name included in that list, there was no particular change in her expression, and she waited indifferently for Ava to tire herself out. You see, I really hate you. I'm honored, same here. I built this future for George's sake. To think that it would be snatched away by you. To think that it would be stolen away by Rudolph's daughter can't bear it. think that I would leave my fortune stolen away without even leaving behind a child. That I cannot forgive. If only you'd just give all your fortune to charity. What about all those religious people you used to go so far out of your way to find? Hmm? <laughs> I straight up need to start taking notes. Right? Like, actually, though. Yeah. And they all say the same thing. My excessive wealth has become a burden to me. And they always say something about how I need to give it up and cleanse myself. <laughs> then I thought of something. I stopped donating. For a time, Ava had searched for the founders of the several strange and new religious cults, perhaps seeking peace in her heart. But they gave her heart no relief, and if anything, they ended up increasing her paranoia further. If you have too much money, why don't you start buying up thoroughbreds and making some corned beef? I thought of something even more interesting. I've worried over it a lot. What can I do to make things horrible for you? I thought about killing you. I also thought about erasing all my wealth. Leaving you penniless and sending you off to a slave trader or something. Wouldn't that be wonderful? You'd have your arms and legs chopped off and be forced to take customers until Whoa. you died. Oh, <laughs> that would be so wonderful. <laughs> So, is this fun for you? Oh, yes it is. It's fun to scare you, but very soon I will die. But I thought about how I might continue to cause you pain even after my death. And then... It was surprisingly simple. <laughs> <laughs> Extremely Sieve gaming voice. <laughs> and that step is surprisingly simple. I can't do a Sieve gaming voice, but... <laughs> <laughs> I called you because I wanted to talk about it. I have midterms coming up. Keep it brief. I decided I will have you inherit all of my fortune. Uh, oh? Not only that, but I decided that till the very day I die, I'll expand that fortune as much as I can. Inflating it to massive proportions before having you inherit all of it. 
Can you even imagine what that would be like? I don't get it. Because it's stupid. <laughs> That's right, you don't get it, do you? Look forward to it, it really is fun being rich. Everyday yokai from across Japan come to play. From now on, your li entire life will be followed by talk shows and weekly magazines. The media will criticize me no matter what I do or don't do. If I donate, they'll attack me for being bourgeois. And if I hesitate, I'll be abused as a miser. Oh, every day really is wonderful, you see. So it'd be great to let you have that kind of life when you're so young and have so much ahead of you. Doesn't that sound absolutely wonderful? <laughs> Looks like the public's opinion of all you've done was spot on. Too true. Yes, that is true. Go ahead. Abuse me as much as you want. Soon you will face that same criticism. Japanese culture dictates that good people live in honorable poverty, while the wealthy should just die. No matter what you do, or do not do, you will eventually be lifted up as a symbol of envy and hate across all of Japan. I wonder how twisted your life will become after living that. You have no allies. No one will listen to your worries. Abusing you will become a public sport. And no one can stop that. Oh, Ange. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. I wonder how you will live your life and how you'll end it. Enjoy to the fullest the life of being unable to trust anyone in the world. Being unable to love anyone. Being unable to talk with anyone. I'll be patiently waiting for you to take that story of hardship down with you into hell. <laughs> her insane laughter turned into a painful cough. Without changing her expression in the slightest, looking completely unconcerned, Ange stared at the only survivor of Rokinjima. Perhaps because he found it the violent coughing suspicious, the guard gave a short knock on the door and rushed in at the same time. Ange glanced at him wordlessly, making it clear that she didn't intend to move a step from where she was. Ange was prepared for some kind of trap to frame her in Ava's death. However, that was fortunately a needless fear. The guard rubbed Ava's back, he poured a hot water from a thermos into a mug. Seated, Ava kept coughing, apparently in pain. Ange figured that this was probably the last she'd see of the Rokinjima witch's final days. Eventually, the coughing subsided, and Ava regained her normal breathing. However, the glittering madness inside her eyes hadn't subsided in the slightest. Now, oh, I'll give it to you, that cursed mass of gold in the Usharomia family headship, as well as the name of the Golden Witch, Beatrice. Enjoy the insane, twisted rest of your life fitting for the name of the witch. I don't need that. More importantly, tell me. On that day, what happened on Rokunjima? I don't believe it was an accident. Tell me the truth about what happened that day, and why father and mother and Nissan died. <laughs> oh yes, that is the best way I have to harass you, isn't it? What happened on that day? What happened on this day in 1986? You want to know what they said before they died, right? <laughs> I won't tell you. <laughs> I'll leave behind the cursed gold. But you know what? I'll take the truth you seek with me to hell. That's the best way I can torment you. Oh, are you mad? If you want to hear it so much, try going to hell and asking your family there. In that case, you'd better die right now, right? <laughs> if only just give up and die right now. <laughs> oh. That laugh continued until she started coughing again. And that cough did not subside until she started moaning and going into convulsions. Her last words were recorded as, I was mad. <laughs> October 4th, 1986. On Rokinjima, the Usharomiya family's customary and final family conference was held. And on the next day, October 5th, an extremely unfortunate accident occurred, and the Usharomiya family was wiped out. Unfortunately, fortunately, Usharomiya Eva escaped from that, and inherited almost all the Usharomiya family's fortune. However, due to the many turbulent rumors surrounding the Ushiromiya family, the way Ava acted afterwards, and her unnatural actions at the time of the unfortunate accident, the public was in an uproar over whether this might have been a conspiracy to get all the inheritance for herself. Under pressure from the public, prosecutors repeatedly tried to investigate the matter, 
and the media began tracing the outline of a conspiracy they called the Rokunjima Suspicion. But in the end, they weren't even able to find proof that this unfortunate accident was a crime. However, because of the media continued to give impression that Rokunjima's suspicion was a conspiracy of Ava's, public opinion began to believe that she was the true culprit. Of course, that was also influenced by the bad impression that caused by all that easily condemnable, overbearing financial activity, which she had carried out using that vast wealth. The time she did something and the rumors started spreading, the media would bring back the Rokunjima's suspicion, blaming the criminal justice system by saying that she was the true culprit, and the only reason she hadn't been arrested was because even the police had been bribed. So the impression that she was a great villain grew stronger and stronger. Her heart eventually degenerated, and ironically, began to transfigure her into the kind of human that the public expected. By now, Ava had no one she could trust, no family. After her beloved husband passed away, the talk shows occasionally mentioned his company, saying that it was run recklessly while criticizing and disgracing its former accomplishments. Even her beloved son, George, was dramatized as the stereotypical rich, lazy son that the public expected and no one even wanted to know what a simple and honest character he had possessed. As to how much of his hurt Ava, and whoop, I clicked the ahead button too quickly. As to how much of this all hurt Ava and ran her to ruin, no one cared. The public was only interested out of curiosity about how a super rich evil woman who killed her whole family lived her pitiful later years. So that happened more and more, and eventually... Ava's personality was transfigured until people started calling her a lunatic. She said that this sometimes reminded her of her father, whom she had once admired in his later years, and that she laughed at herself with scorn. And on the day of that final family conference, because Usharomi Rudolph's daughter, Ange, had been sick and stayed with her mother's family, she had not participated. At the age of six, she had lost her family and gained Ava as her guardian. Since Ange had become... So she's 18. Yep. Since Ange had become Ava's only blood relative, Ava took very good care of her. She had imposing guards surrounding Ange's person at all times to prevent her from coming to harm. Ange had even had a right to play with friends, to come home from school together, and to enjoy the seasons together stolen away. So that she can live a full and pleasant school life, Ava had sent Ange to an elegant boarding school that took care of her every need, completely isolating her from the world. She didn't even know the popular songs that girls her age might hum. She was never given a chance to enjoy window shopping with her friends or stuffing her mouth with crepes, much less an encounter with a member of the opposite sex to make her heart throb. I mean, we all know what happens at boarding school. <laughs> Ange did not have a single friend. If anyone carelessly acted friendly with Ange, they would be scolded by the guards, or else the teachers. All of them were strictly ordered not to let shabby humans approach the daughter of the esteemed Usharomia family. During that time, Ooh. the talk shows were always mentioning Usharomia Ava, always spreading rumors about her countless financial misdeeds. Those who knew her daughter was naturally began Those who knew her daughter was naturally began who? to keep the You missed the word who. Those who knew who her daughter was Ah ha ha thank you. Those who knew who her daughter was naturally began to keep their distance. Even now she was called a witch at school and any time something bad happened, even if there was no proof it would be whispered. Whispered as though it were absolute truth that she had imposed the, her will on the school staff. The environment makes the person. By now she had a heart as wild as those around her feared. No one trusted her, so she never bothered to believe in anyone. No one loved her, so she never even tried to love. And when Ava caught an incurable illness on top of all this, it was whispered that this too was a conspiracy, and this time, Ange was set up as the mastermind. Everyone whispered that the, the daughters of witches are witches too. Even the talk shows and the weekly magazines whispered that. So Ange also accepted it as though it was definitely, and as though it was obviously true. Therefore, since she already believed that she was a witch, when she heard that the name of the Golden Witch was being turned over to her, she only felt like saying, you just figured that out now. However, she was at least sure of one thing. This title of witch that she had inherited would definitely never be inherited by anyone else. She would be the last head of the Usharonia family, and the last and only Golden Witch. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Interesting. Interesting. Ange could be seen on the roof of a skyscraper. Compared to the winds of the world that had been beaten down upon her until now, this strong, cold wind was warm and pleasant. Below her lay a beautiful nighttime scene in a dazzling river of red and white lights. It was supposed to be clear out that night. 
but there really should have been countless stars stretching out over the sky. However, the light from the ground was too bright, so you couldn't see them at all. Ange couldn't help but think that she was truly must what she truly saw must lie in that unseen starlight. The world of reality below her looked so far away from here. She could imagine that this place was the closest to the world she really should be in. There was only one thing that Ange cursed. Why had she not been able to go to that family conference on that day 12 years ago? Even though she had gone, it would probably have been possible for her to stay with her family forever. Lately, she had been dreaming about her family over and over again. The person I was 12 years ago calls out frantically, urging them not- Oh, do you want to read this bit? The person I was 12 years ago calls out frantically, urging them not to go to the family conference. But both Dad and Mom are too far away, and my hand won't reach them. Battler Nissan always loved me a lot, and he'd <laughs> always pat my head. Ooh, <laughs> head pets. Hmm, that's right. <laughs> Battler head pets. <laughs> but even though it looks like that hand's about to touch me, even it does not reach. For some reason, I started having that dream over and over. Every time I had that s the same dream, I usually uselessly tried to stretch out my hand even more forcefully, over and over and over. Even if only Battler Nissan had lived, then perhaps we'd at least be able to support each other in my cold and lonely reality. But his hand never reaches me. Even if I climb to the roof of this tall building, I'm so far away from all of them. A mysterious girl appears in my dreams and urges me. She urges me to find the truth of what happened 12 years ago. She has blue hair and I feel like she looks familiar for some reason. <sighs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> if only I could learn everything that happened to Father and the rest of them on that day. Would they come back? At least one of them? There was no way that anyone would answer that question for me. I get it. In this world, I have no family or friends. So let's go. Let's go home to where my family is. From the start, Ange's figure had been on the outer side of the fence. The scenery below her eyes was distant, beautiful, and so fantastical that it actually didn't give rise to fear. If I look down, I'll surely be swallowed up by the world below. So I looked up, because I wanted to be taken to the world above, the world where my family was. Who cares about vast wealth? Who cares about cursed gold? Who cares about the Golden Witch, Beatrice? What I really want, even a mountain of gold, couldn't get me. What I need for that is to take a single step forward, just that little bit of courage. At that moment, I definitely heard a voice. It was a voice I knew. A voice that had called to me in my dreams for so long. Before my eyes, in other words, in mid-air above that jet-black nighttime scenery, there was the figure of the girl I'd seen in my dreams. She spoke again with the same voice I'd heard in those dreams. Your assistance is required. My assistance? Who needs it? <sighs> Your family needs it. Your family has been eternally imprisoned in the span from this day 12 years ago until the following day. If I save them, does that mean my family will come home? When I asked the question I had most wanted to, the girl cruelly stopped talking and hung her head. I cannot promise that. The enemy is the Golden Witch Beatrice, a mighty opponent. I cannot oppose her, but another Golden Witch might be able to manage some. I... I don't know what you're talking about. The only one who composed the Beatrice of 1986 was the final Beatrice of 1998. In other words, you, Ange. A-N-G-E, Beatrice. And it seems like they use the capitals for Ava as well, yeah. huh? So... And, and Maria. Is it just meant to signify, like, this is your witch name? Yeah, maybe. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it, yeah. That witch from 12 years ago took away my family? 
That's right. She is your foe. The root cause that always leads to your future of isolation. My family's foe. In exchange, I will search for a fragment with the ideal world that you wish for. A world where your family comes home. I make no promises that your desire will be granted. Beatrice's game board in 1986 is quite perfect. I planned on bringing you that ideal fragment as a present today, but I still cannot find it. This is a very firm fate. I haven't seen the likes of it since the time I fought Lambda Delta. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm giving you a chance for revenge. In exchange, I promise to search for and bring you the happiest resolution among the possibilities you're capable of accepting. Revenge. It may be a fruitless effort. Even if you succeed in your revenge, there's no definite proof that your family will return. But if you manage to hit a miraculous probability, you may only be able to bring one person back if that. Andrew understood the meaning of that dream. A dream where it seemed that with just a little more stretching her hand might be able to reach at least Battler Nissan. A miraculous probability means it's still higher than zero, right? Is it one percent? Trying to read any probabilities before the result is useless. So I cannot tell you that number. But it'll definitely be slightly more likely than if I do nothing. Yes. As long as you don't know, do not throw that desire of yours away. But be prepared. It is extremely close to zero. Okay. I'll take you up on that offer. Are you sure? You probably won't be able to return here again. This isn't the world I'm supposed to be in. I'll find the world I'm supposed to be in myself. Tell me your name. The Witch of Miracles, Burncastle. And by that name, I acknowledge you as the Golden Witch, Ange Beatrice. We haven't seen new art. We haven't seen new art! Eh. I guess? Sure? Nah. It, nah. Yeah. Nah. It's, nah. it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I, you know what? I, we had, we, it's been a while since we, Burn Castle's new art is fine. Yeah. I like it. However, that said, that said, it's yeah. also, I don't know. Much less, it's full of much less, per like, like, look at this. She's got so much bang over here. Like her forehead's here, but her bangs hang out over to here. <laughs> you know, it's like. Let's see that new art again one more time. Why did they make Ange stacked? That's annoying. Everyone, because they made everyone stacked. That's, it's and annoying. It's, she's 18 though. Like, why are they making her stacked and like, ugh. It doesn't. Anyway, One thing anyway. I will say, one thing I will say, it looks less obnoxious on that particular model than it does on, say, Kyrie's model. Yeah. Yeah. But, but that said though, Kyrie was already stacked. This is a character who is not. And yeah. then is and it's like come Be on because you gotta have booba <laughs> i don't know what you want is that what makes people put the put the money in the pachi slot i guess see i'm beginning to think that the capital means that she's that they're being recognized as a witch so we've had maria mm -hmm. and we've had ava, ava. We've and had now Ange. Ange. We should have had a third. Which one? I know a third. We should have had a fourth because we've had three arcs. There have been three Beatos. Mm hmm. I feel like there should be one per arc. Let's let let's set that aside. Let's set that aside. That's a good let's thought. That's a good thought. As of now, you are a true witch. The instant she proclaimed that I was a. Oh, that's you. The instant she proclaimed that I was a witch, I felt dizzy as though something inside me had changed drastically. Then I fell off. At that time, I heard a clunk. It was the sound of the door that opened to the staircase to the roof. It was Aunt Ava's guards. They're only guards in name. Aren't they the cage that wraps the tightest around me, shutting me in? They saw that I was already on the other side of the fence and dashed forward, horrified. When we found the target, request him back up on the roof. And son, we're looking for you. It's dangerous there, so quickly come this way. What is that? My fan club. I'm pretty popular. No point in getting caught. 
What song is this? An awesome song, that's right? why. No point in getting caught. Let's go. Looking annoyed, Burncastle turned on her heels in the jet black sky. Watching that perfectly casual gesture, I followed her as though it was completely normal. Anshan! Wait! Don't be hasty! Look it out! Ah, uh, it's useless. It's all useless. She's got that battler. Yep. Well then, see you again next time. Please send a limo to get me. Because everyone else will be there too. See you. Anshan! Oh, this track rocks! Yeah! Oh, man, I can't read any of these credits, but... I can read that one. Die. Pre-holder. Pre-holder. Molly. All season. End scripter. End scripter. This, this song is a great song. I'm all about this. RMG and high tension wires. By the courtesy of Hats Unlimited Incorporated. I love that TF2. I have got a question. I feel like the hats have actually been fairly limited. That's true. They have it. Minus 45. M. Zaki. SB Yune. ZTS. Oh, those are the soundtrack. Okay. The people that were Z ZTS. I have the um, couple of ZTS albums from the uh, soundtracks. Okay. 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 That makes sense. Sunny. Zaki. Cap. Ryuga. Neo. Silver Forest. I feel like I know that Silver Forest. Why do I know Silver Forest? Did they do? Did they do a Toho thing? Is that something? I Let have no idea. That. Let me fucking Google that. I. It's weird that I... Why would I recognize that? I love how we get three sets of credits within like a span of an hour here. This is great. Oh, this is good. Oh, I broke it. Condition of a new game board. The next episode's lock has been removed. Oh my god! They did Peton, Peton, Suru Peton, 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 Suru Peton, 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 Suru Peton, 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 Suru Peton. We are not okay. That's why I know Silver Forest. It was absolutely a fucking Toho thing. I wonder what the background this time. Well, we haven't started chapter four yet, so it won't change yet, probably. Oh, hello. Sup. It's me, the hero. All right, let's of see if they've story. added the tips for chapter three yet. They have, okay. All so right. let's take a look through. Hey! That's. Okay, so surprise. This is maybe a bit meta, but this is like a finished release of all. Or first half of a finished release of all eight chapters. So I think we can expect that that's going to be the full spread. Maybe. Maybe not. They all could right. fuck with us. They could! It's Umineko. All They'll right. fuck with us. Okay, Lucia Romeo Ange, the daughter of Rudolph and Kyrie, Battler's younger sister from a different mother. She hasn't come in contact with Battler often, but is extremely fond and respectful of him. She was sick and absent during the family conference, so she always ends up surviving in solitude. A very fortunate, unfortunate girl whose heart is in tatters. It's a bad habit of always walking around with a massive amounts of cash, throwing it out to whoever comes first. <laughs> okay, that's that's got to be rich girl practice right there. Here, you want money? Take it. I don't need it. Okay, let's see what it says about everybody else, though. I bet it's different. I bet it's different. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. So this is the, this is all just the regular stuff here. But is it? Yeah. This is all the standard stuff. Let's just take through take a look through everybody from the left side to the right, just systematically see if anything showed up. Okay. Um. Well, without the execute without executing, you mean. Oh, we, I forgot we can do that. Okay. I forgot we can do that. We gotta do that. Alright, so let's start with um, Kinzo. Okay. It was game over right from the start. We've seen this one. Yeah, but let's just double check, because we ha we didn't go through all of them for the for the deaths. That's true. So let's just go through it systematically. Uh, anything interesting on Kinzo? Nope. Alright, let's see. Let's go with Kraus. What do you have for us, Kraus? Nothing... No, that's, that's all stuff we kind of knew. Yeah. Boom! 
This corpse was found in the Rose Garden Arbor. The cause of death is assumed to be strangling with a rope-like object. A stage-shaped weapon was sticking out of his thigh. If only there wasn't that stupid epitaph. I wouldn't have had no needed a stake. What a pain. <laughs> All right, Ava, settle down. Not so he. I'm Krause's wife. Nah. I'm gonna read my execution thing. Okay. My corpse was found in the Rose Garden Arbor. The cause of my death is assumed to be strangling with a rope-like object. Ah! <laughs> a stake-shaped weapon was sticking out of my calf. Ouch. Why do I have to bond the epitaph in the first place? Is this some kind of game? Is this <laughs> some kind of twisted joke? <laughs> And Jessica? Let's see. Cross and not see his daughter. You want punch her at the headship. Yeah, okay, that's all that's all stuff. Let's see the execution. Missing. I was certainly joined with Canon in the Golden Land. We both apologized for our own cowardice, communicated our true and honest feelings. And we hugged each other until our final moments. Afterwards, I was chewed to pieces by demons and went to hell. Ouch! <laughs> it's alright, Canon's with me. He got you to demons too. So, pausing for a moment. Yep. The skirt has two layers, but is also a cross, but is also part of the jacket, and I'm furious. I hate just all calling of, that out. This outfit just is calling makes me that so out. mad. I don't understand. I anyway, don't. on to the next. Also, look at the proportions. <laughs> it's just oh, okay. I, I, it's perfect. Okay, perfect. Let's see. Okay. Did we know that he had run a hospital and turned it over to his son? I feel like we didn't read I, his. No, we had not. Nope. Now? Hmm. See what happens when you actually go. My corpse was found in the hover in front of the monster. The monster knows how much is assumed to be a gun or a spare ship. It's a little longer. It's a little longer, and he probably would have managed to return alive. However, in the very end, the witch did not permit that. Neat. They keep on using that language, gun or spear-shaped object. Just pop an open notepad real quick. <laughs> <gasps> All right. Ava, huh? Hmm. Whoa. Has she always had pants under the dress? Yeah, we just never see that far down. Oh my God. We've seen this outfit before. Though. Like, we've looked at it before. But... Yeah, but my brain didn't process that. All right. Pow. Oh, wait. We can't execute her. Because she didn't die. Yeah. Well, yet. Yeah. I was wondering if they would let us see how she died. In the... Let's see. Hideyoshi. Let's see. Okay. Let's see what you got for us, Hideyoshi. I died in the hall of the mansion, my chest pierced by a stake-shaped weapon. Youch. Mm, that was careless of me. I didn't think you were still alive. What? I didn't think you were still alive. Wait! I read that wrong. I didn't think you were still alive. Hmm... Are we just looking too much into that, or...? Did Ava think she had already killed Hideyoshi? That's weird. Remember, up until the end, it was her intention to let him live. Yeah. And George. Nothing really new in the deets there. Let's execute him. His corpse was found. Oh, you want to read your corpse? Yeah. My corpse was found in the mansion's parlor. The weapon used on me is assumed to be a gun or spear-shaped object. In exchange for my soul, the witch gave eight numbers. 07151129. If you say it, a small golden land will be opened. I have no idea if this is just a silly thing. This is new information. If you say it, a gold, small golden land will be opened. Um, that's interesting. I wonder if that's a Japanese pun. If we read them out in Japanese. Um, also, this might just be nothing but 07 expansion. Ha! Hmm. 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 That's interesting. If you say it, a small golden land will be opened. But let's keep that in mind. Let's keep that in mind. All right. She likes vaccine ice cream. She hates boredom and people who deny her existence. <laughs> 
what a useless dream. To try and kill me despite being a mere human. Fire your bullets and they will merely reflect back towards you like the light off a mirror. However, there does exist just one way to kill me. You hold that method in the palm of your hand. Though I doubt one as mediocre as you could ever pull it off. <laughs> it I've read this before. The game? I've read this before, but still. I'm still reading. What if you click execute again? Do it again. Try again. Try again. Try clicking execute. No, no, no. Just and then just do it again. I've I, I, did, okay. I did. I did. I did. Okay. I was wondering if it would be something like that. <laughs> Let's see. Rudolph. Apparently, they gotta be finished off with stinks from here on out. Gross. Ew. <laughs> Alright, we'd seen him, right? And we'd seen yeah. Kyrie, I believe. Punching. That like is a particularly lethal spot. Is there no to just kill her in some other easier way and stick a stake in her corpse? Like, really? Come on now. <sighs> Are we gonna see any more of Avatris from here on out? I really wonder. Oh, you thought I'd forgotten about the funny voice. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what happens when we execute Battler? Shot to death by Usharomia Avon. Saw the mansion. Oh, no! The weapon was a Winchester for Kinzo's collection. Jessica had lost her eyesight, along with Battler. Jessica had lost her eyesight, along with Battler. Wolves and sheep puzzle. Wolves and sheep puzzle. Interesting. That's interesting. That's really interesting. We've talked about the wolves and sheep puzzle before, right? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Let's uh, resurrect that bad boy. <laughs> I'll never get tired of that happening. It's really weird. Yeah, it feels pretty good, right? I do not want to talk to you. <laughs> uh, across the Nazi, think it might be a survivor. Yeah, that's all stuff we've heard. Execute. Thank, to thank Genji for his many years of service, let, him, let allow him to rest in the VIP room. Right. Right. All the servants in Kinzo had uh, yeah, yeah, epitaphs yeah. Related, related to uh, the, the room. Okay. And what happens to Rosa? This woman was the human sacrifice for the birth of the new witch. That's me. Aren't you happy? <laughs> why, are you, why isn't anyone happy for me? <laughs> Listen. I try really hard. Okay. Excellent powers of memorization. She knows all kind of obscure trivia. That makes sense that Maria would just have the predilection to memorizing random shit. Uh, let's kill her. Ooh! Hmm. Her blood became the red ink for the witch's oath. Interesting. I still don't know what that means. But... Ange... Can we execute Andrew? Can't. Okay. Shannon. Shannon. And if we execute Shannon. Let Shannon have the parlor with its wonderful view of the Rose Garden on sunny days. Hmm. I gotta say, Beta really played me well this round. <laughs> I, I like I was so like, oh, finally, we're getting a different dimension to this character, but nah. But also, but also, what if we are? Because we also know Beatrice is being played. Right. Ho All right. Hold on. Tuesday. We, we promised we'd finish this before. Yeah. We what? We'd finish. We we promised we'd finish going through the tips yeah. before we started going to theories. So let's just keep on looking through here. Chapel. Let him continue to protect the Lord's precious place even after death. Interesting. Okay. With the own characters. Yeah, that's something. That's yeah. stuff we knew already. I was wondering if the fact that it specifically gives us the character matters in some way. Yeah. Go to. Let's see. Boo! The room next to the study is fitting for him, considering how much he wanted to earn Kinzo's favor. <laughs> Burn. Catch me! Crafty more than competent when it comes to performing your duties because of her crafty love of she's not highly. Rude. Oh, okay. Rude. Seldom used second floor guest room was her secret napping spot. Ah! Great. Okay. Let's All see right. what we got on page two. Nothing really new Ooh. that we... And shows up here... Right, because she's a witch now. Okay. That's cool. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so those so, are so the capitals. Refer to when they become witches. Okay. Okay. That has been resolved. I feel a little silly now. 
from what my gut react. I don't think my gut reaction was wrong, but I feel a little silly. Here's the thing. It might. might not. Okay. A now-retired Endless Witch and Beatrice's teacher. She used the Endless Magic pro uh, properly and devoted her life to the smiles and happiness of many people. She taught Beatrice the, the Endless Magic, believing that Beatrice would also devote herself to the people and retired. Though she was Beatrice's teacher, she was also a magician employed by Beatrice's family. For that reason, she interacted with Beatrice in a manner befitting for a servant. Some point to this as the source of Beatrice's arrogance and recklessness. Beatrice's family? That doesn't jive with us. Hmm. Was Beatrice's entire backstory just made up whole cloth to get in Battler's favor? Okay, but here's the other possibility. What if all of this is made up of whole cloth, and the bits that she was using to pull at Battler's heartstrings for the plot and all mm -hmm. of that were the only true bits? Maybe. Hold on to that thought we, again. She's we a fake witch, so this shouldn't be true. This shouldn't be true. Can't execute her. <laughs> How about Lambda Delta? How you doing? The Witch of Certainty who has lived for a thousand years. Combines the idea that her workers are rewarded and are revered even by humans. Though she's a witch, she does not stray far from the concepts of humans. For that reason, her power as one worshipped by human is incalculable. However, she's fickle about whose efforts she chooses to reward, and in many cases she bestows her favor upon those who entertain her the most. And her immense, swift, and terrifying power can make any witch surrender in an instant. However, she is often reckless, and Burncastle was able to take full advantage of that. Can't execute her. Okay. Bernie. <sighs> she has a cat tail? Yeah. How did I ever fucking Pretty cute, know that? huh? <sighs> it's super kawaii. Every witch has got to have their moe points. Every got single it. one of them. Every single one of them. Witch of Miracles, who has lived for a thousand years. Fast power is capable of creating all kinds of miracles, but her heart is broken a bit as a result. Oh. Back when she was a human, Lambda Delta once imprisoned her with a cruel fate, toying with her the whole time. As a result, it seems she is unable to abandon others who are caught within a similar fate. I... Okay. Theoretically, she's a witch with the greatest of powers, but in practice, this is no more realistic than fold folding a piece of paper a hundred times so it reaches the moon. Yet she did fold it a hundred times. Interesting. How you doing, Bayo? Beato? It's interesting that she shows up in both. Beatrice does. It's because this is witches. We also have um, Anne showing up here in both. But that's interesting. Does that imply that Beatrice the witch is different this than is the Beatrice? Mm, I don't think so, because this is the lineage. This is just the page for all the magical characters. And you notice we have the lineage of the endless magic here. That's true. This yellow line. Yeah. The golden line. Golden line, golden magic. Yeah. Gold all the way down. And the witch who lived for a thousand years, ba -ba 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 known for being exceptionally cruel even among witches. Loves bullying the weak and is capable of using trial and error endlessly to find the cruelest fate they can possibly be given. She toys with her victims even further by piling one on after another. This witch is extremely powerful, but word has it she sometimes becomes obsessed with creating certain patterns so that her means end up becoming her goal. Ava Triss. Ava Beatrice. Solved the riddle of the witch's epitaph and was welcomed as a new endless witch. She was gifted with an aptitude for magic and is expected to grow into an extraordinary great witch. The genius of a witch often overindulged in her own power during her younger days. Such are the trials that only geniuses may endure. And if she proves successful, her name will surely be engraved in the history of endless witches. Will she be able to overcome the trials that forced her predecessor to surrender? Can't execute her. Can we execute her? I don't. We can't. Oh, these are the Chesters. Ha. Ha ha. Oh, that's interesting that clicking on it then changes that. Uh, I think it just loads a random one each time like it did with the stakes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did. Jester 410. A weapon in, I'm a weapon in a contract with Beatrice. I'm a kid with a strong personality whose peculiar style of speech tends to make light of people. Yeah. <laughs> I like laughing at people who are serious and can never relax, which is why I'm so fond of 45 and Lucifer. My choice of words may be coarse, but I love company and get lonely easily. I get depressed if there isn't someone talking with me constantly. I'm particularly skilled when it comes to firing control, and I can wield unparalleled combative force, even in close-range fighting, Nihi. <laughs> I'm a weapon of, in a contract with Beatrice. I have a methodical and timid personality, as well as a fairly strong persecution complex. Thanks hmm. to that, I'm well-suited to shoring up the weaknesses of Fortan's rough personality when, they work as, when I, we work as a pair. I can't stand silence, so I'll often become emotionally insecure if I'm not being ordered around by someone constantly. 
I excel in search and decision-making capabilities. The support I provide doubles the combative force of the sisters. Cool! Why are they Icelandic? <laughs> this is gonna kill me! <laughs> oh. I am one of the 72 great demons. I work for a master in exchange for various forms of compensation. I currently have a contract with Beatrice as her butler, head furniture. I've become proficient at housekeeping after serving in many households, so my ability as a butler is very high, as is my ability to cook a snickerdoodle <laughs> and place it in a box. <laughs> in the high society of witches, employing me has become a kind of status symbol. Furthermore, the cookies I make are superb, and witches will often form a line demanding them. That is actually part of my lore. I must possess tremendous magical power, but since I want to stay out of the spotlight to further boost my master's reputation, my combat capabilities are, as yet, unknown. Even to me. Even to <laughs> Well, I know them. So we know about the seven sisters. We've read about them already. Yeah. Each one of them has their own thing, though. God damn it. Okay, we're not reading about the seven sisters again. Sorry. All of the goats. That's new. That's new. All of the goats. All of the goats. We already went over this. Our comment section are the goats. The greatest of all time. Got him. Wholesome got him. Yeah. <gasps> if, if you are the greatest of all time, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. There, there you go. Only the greatest of all time. Like, comment, and subscribe. At all times. To every video you ever watch. <laughs> but specifically these ones. Yeah. Low level furniture and service to Beatrice. They're a great number, but silent and lacking personality. They obediently follow the master's orders. Great! I do not care. The senses are closer to those of animals than humans. Surprisingly dull-witted, which sometimes leads them to misunderstand their orders. By nature, a massive build like a minotaur and fearsome superhuman strength. They may be low level furniture, but the ability to summon an exhaustible supply of them makes them com extremely convenient. Awesome. And... And Beatrice! I'm the final witch, born in 1998. I was named by Ava as her successor and was accepted, with Burncastle as my guardian. I had to start from square one as a witch, but because I existed, because I exist 12 years in the future, I possess the ultimate sort of magical resistance, for none of Beatrice's magic can target me. Ha! Huh, that's great! Because I know that I survive, I have plot immunity. That's true! Her surviving is a foregone conclusion. <laughs> She, that's the ultimate plot armor. Furthermore, in a manner opposite to my bro's magic resistance, I have a natural talent for attacks against anything of a magical nature. I hold tremendous potential for both offense and defense. However, the distance is vast. 12 years is a long time. That is true. Can we execute her? Cannot. That was interesting. That was interesting. And this brings us back here. That was interesting. That was very interesting. Okay. Now, let's... Talk about some shit. Yeah. Okay. So one of the things that we wanted to bring up was in the final bit there, whether how much of our revelations actually are true. Um because there was one thing that really specifically that interested me. Yeah? Um We were talking about the big scene where Beato, you know, makes the battler cover his ears and uses the red to deny witches. Mm -hmm. And I was saying, like, yeah, she's obviously just, you know, bullshitting because she was doing the whole thing to get Battler to uh, comply. So, and, you know, the rest of the, the rest of the piece, the rest of the people on the game board seem to be in cahoots with her. So, that's said and done. You had a different take on it. Yeah, I think, I think the rules of the game are the rules of the game. I think that I, they're, they're speaking red truth. To each other i think that i i don't think it's clear that mm. ava beatrice was in on the whole thing i think right. it may well be the case they set up a whole new witch just to do the plot of opposing the new witch and yeah. do all of that without having her in on it and even went ahead and took moves to defeat her in the game using the red truth which is truth yeah so that would be interesting to me, because why would she put herself in that position? Because we know it's the case that she's not a real witch. Yeah. Even from later. Right, 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 right. So 
Did she just explain what was really going on? It's certainly... Part of the ploy was to just have her explain what the ploy was. Yep. Yep. And... <laughs> oh, man. And Battler it's... bought it. That's how they That's how they know it worked. Yep. And so, like, because we were discussing whether or not we could actually take what Beato was explaining as evidence that there is something going on that we fundamentally do not understand about. Setting. Which there obviously is. There obviously is. There... There obviously is, but like it's like in a different scenario that there is a fundamental truth about what is happening that we do not understand and have not and have, can only get glimpses at. That remains true. Mm -hmm. It's not just that like oh there's a hidden motivation. It's that there's something fundamental going on here that we that we have not been able to grasp yet and may not be able to. I don't know. It's it, this game is, can be very subtle when it wants to be. But it, it it definitely seems to be the case that there is not just that things aren't what they appear, but that there is something different going on. And and what we see is not perfectly capturing that. <sighs> I've also got to check the uh, online encyclopedia of integer oh. sequences. For oh, that dude, check. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. What if it's in there uh, for the number or for the. S My one, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, checking OES yeah, should be fine rather than Googling it because. Absolutely, yeah. I'm Googling it would be. Integer sequences. Yeah. So, they, so, as individual numbers, they don't appear yes. as a sequence in anything. As pairs, they do not appear in anything. How about just as a number? Oh, my uh, unlock isn't on? 1129. And, That's really interesting. Yeah, and it does not appear alone either. It would be weird if it... Because it, it's clearly not meant to be taken as one number because it has a leading zero. Maybe. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. So, we'll, we'll mull over on that. We will. Um, I like that it's a key that allows... <laughs> it's a key that allows them to reach the golden ladder. <laughs> you know what they used to make computers? Gold. <gasps> I'm. I'm oh. Here's the thing. I'm actually right about this. <laughs> I'm so mad. I'm at, the Golden Land is some kind of digital realm or whatever, and this is the Golden Land is the ending of the video game Umineko, Umineko no one, Naku Kukoroni. Kukoroni. Yep. Oh my god, it's so consistent. I fucking hate it. <laughs> Don't you hate it? Like, I, like I hate that. The more I think about it, the more it seems to actually fit. <laughs> Oh, uh, I don't God. believe it. I don't believe and cuz you know me. I, I have a I have a intense disdain for that kind of uh plot reveal. But it's consistent, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is my associate, Kirito Sorda online. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh, um what else were we thinking about? The revelation that Beato is not a full witch and is living on borrowed power. Yeah. That, that's a lot. Sure is, sure is. <sighs> because... How is that consistent with what we know about Beato? Or what we've been told about her? Supposedly she's been a feared witch for a thousand years, but also supposedly she grew up in an isolated mansion on Rokinjima. We don't know about grew up on Rokujima. Grew up in an isolated mansion, sure, but I don't think... on Ro No, because because uh, Rosa came into contact with her. Remember, they they said it in red. They didn't say that she grew up there. They right, said right. that she had been and homunculized or something. Right, right, because it's implied that that's something happened to her and she lost her memories and stuff like. That. But she's been around for a thousand years supposedly and developed a fearsome reputation you mean to tell me the entire time she's been doing that it's been because lambda delta has been behind her supporting her i mean it does seem like you need to have a supporter in order to become a witch that seems to be consistent with what we know but mm -hmm. so i how about she's not been a witch for a thousand years okay how about some elements of what's going on and what's been told are likely to be true. Like what? Something like 
Well, perhaps her having a tragic backstory being shut up in a secret mansion on Rokunjima, mm -hmm. the sob story she tries to tell the battler to pull at his heartstrings. Yeah. Maybe that was the only true thing. Maybe that was the only mm. thing that was accurate. And the whole shit about the rest of it, being a western witch and a thousand years old and all of that, is the fabrication and the teacher thing and so on. And... Mm-hmm. That would also be consistent with why is it that she can't write Beatrice? She can't write Beatrice. And why is it that she yep. knows things about what you'd learn about cursive in school? If she had been a normal person, mm -hmm. the age that she would have had to have been, that Kinzo and his whatever wealth and orphanage scheme or whatever yep. kind of plucked out and was like you're you're my new beatrice mm -hmm. you live in this mansion now and you can't leave and you're yep. isolated forever yep that would that would be consistent that would be actually yeah it would be it's clear that we it's clear that we can't take what she says at face value anymore or i, I say anymore anymore like we ever could, like anymore we ever but any war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... <laughs> uh, I knew we were onto something when, uh, when during the last bits, Battler kept saying it out loud that he will accept her as a witch, and I'm like, no, Battler, you're just gonna wind up losing. <laughs> but... Yeah, finding out that it's... I'll admit, for a while, I really wanted to believe that Beato had turned a corner there. Just because I think it'd be a little bit more interesting for her as a character, but... But I also like that she purposely plays on what tropes you would, a person like myself, would find engaging and inviting in a, in a character, and purposely plays that up in order to become appealing to Battler. Here's my counterpoint. Yeah. We also know that she's being played by Lambda Delta. Right. And being made to do this. And so, what if the only reason she was able to do that convincingly... It's because that's how she really that, feels? Yeah. And right before she she told Battler that, yeah, that was just how, that's the kind of person she is. There was a pause. There was a pause, and you notice her face was cycled through a bunch of different expressions. Yes. Like, she was really trying to process something, a whole lot of things at once. Yes. And I'm like, and before she had to double down on it and be like, nope, this is what I gotta do. So, what I'm saying is we're right back where we started. We've got, we got no... <laughs> No information that's helpful to us. Other than that, this is a video game isekai. Other than <laughs> this is definitely a video game isekai. Um, one hundred, or it's not necessarily even an isekai, but it's, it's an isekai. It's an isekai. Okay, everything's an isekai these days. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Could you imagine trying to like write a video game isekai in the year of our Lord twenty twenty one? Yeah, I know, right? My God. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> any other thoughts we want to get out of the way before we? What do you think Angela's role is going to be in the... Because it seems like she's been now set up to become um, Bernie's, like, trump card in the game. Yeah. So, and they've introduced her on the character screen, so clear... And she's the new Beatrice, so clearly she's going to have some bigger role in the game going forward. Yeah, and if people if people wanted my dulcet tones to play her, there must yeah. be some good reason. That's the thing I'm hung up on. Why is it that it was requested that I be her... And also, what voice should I be using? There's obviously a reason, right? <laughs> like, because people hate the voices I give to characters. <laughs> um, I really gotta wonder, though. I really gotta wonder. I feel like it's a secret clue. I feel like it's a. I feel like it's a. Uh, I feel like it's a secret. Or we just on a whim later. decided to let the commenters bully us into making a decision. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Let's yeah. Do that. Yeah. Y'all should bully us more. <laughs> I don't. No, please don't. I regret saying that immediately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Can we can we take one last look at that epitaph before we sign off for the yeah. night? Oh Christ! There's more shit. All right. Hold the fuck up. <laughs> All right. The witch's game record. Oh right, right. This is the thing we get at the end of. Right. Arrived on the ninth twilight, it's time she awakened as a true golden witch. George, new witch will not let anyone survive. Yep. Right, so these aren't even related to the epitaph, it's just the new witch being a bitch. Missing on the tenth twilight. She acknowledged the existence of the witch and prostrated herself. The witch invited her to the golden land. 
Oh! All the riddle of the epitaph returned from Okunjima alive. The witch praised her victory and gave her all the gold and magic. Can we go back to the first screen? Oh, that's the second screen. Really, still hung up on "Chosen by the Key," but yeah, because I, I, th I think we can, I think we can both agree at this point that "Chosen by the Key" basically doesn't mean anything. Because I disagree. I dis absolutely disagree. I disagree with your disagree. I think, okay. I think we've seen plenty of evidence that Beatrice could basically make fucking shit up when it comes to who she chooses to sacrifice and when. I think. Chosen by the key probably means nothing more than the key, like, probably means nothing more than Beatrice wanted you to die. Sorry. Fucking sucks, I guess. Hmm. I, because here's the thing, I believe some of the things we're going to be shown like this are definitely red herrings. That's absolutely true. That's yeah, absolutely yeah. true. That's, I, I definitely think we have to keep in mind that not everything we were shown is going to be important. And I think that is definitely something that that's up to me. The Cheshire Sisters, Imperial Guard Corps. An Imperial Guard Corps formed by the Dragon King of Pendragon in memory of the flight of the Red Dragon and composed only of sisters. They're technically subordinates of the Dragon King, but because of a long relationship with successive generations of Beatrices, Beatrices, <laughs> Beatrices, it was permitted that two Imperial Guard soldiers be lent out. Excuse me. Yeah, wait, sorry, that's right. I was about to get it backwards. Yeah. So I was thinking Matrix, Matrices. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was doing. Okay, good. The sisters are simulated life forms created by magic. For that reason, further sisters with a great variety of personalities are continually being created even now. Explains why they got up to that many. Great costs must be paid to manifest them in the human world, so summoning them can be quite a tricky prospect, even considering the tremendous fighting power they offer. For that reason, they are often summoned as honor guards to serve during special ceremonies and the like. Right. As like a show of power. Yeah, makes sense. Like we can afford to summon these two bitches to to do uh like guard duty for this. Yeah. yeah, so we clearly have a lot of power, right? The Chester Golden Bows. One of the articles of sniping equipment used by the Chester Sisters Imperial Guard Corps. The arrow's trajectory can be trolled at will, but it takes special talent and special training to wield its true potential. For that reason, merely being able to equip it is an honor reserved for high class snipers. It is a masterpiece anti armor sniping bow, capable of penetrating a wide variety of armors and barriers. And with rich rope, uh, with a rich array of ammo that may be used as the arrow's warhead. As a side note, the ammo primarily used during the story were wire-guarded, wing-pierced rounds. The fact that they are wire-guarded, wire guy. We've been doing this for like wire five hours now. <laughs> five hours now. The fact that they are wire-guided guide makes them heavily resistant to deception and capable of long-distance precision, sniping amidst complicated indoor terrain. Guarding the succession of witches. In the noble family of witches, family secrets are often inherited by a single child to prevent a propagation of hidden arts and a subsequent decline in their quality. This rule applies for the endless witches, so their most secret arts are passed down to a single pupil. And once again, and once one has passed down these arts to another, they retire to further stem their propagation. Custom dictates that a witch from another sect make a recommendation before a succession may occur. Lambda Delta recommended Ava. Burncastle recommended Ange. It is unknown who recommended Beato. We think it's Lambda Delta, though. We think. And also, that, that you know, like, there's a problem there, like, who recommended the first, but, like, that's for a different time. Furthermore, during the story, Beatrice inherited that name along with the position. But that is a very recent innovation. The predecessor was the original Beatrice, and all endless witches before her had different names. After that, it became customary for the name to be inherited as well, and Ava followed that tradition when giving Ange the name of Beatrice. Okay, so the Beatrice thing is just fucking feel like it. All right, fair enough. So let's check the execute. <laughs> I didn't realize double clicking could do everyone at once. Really? <laughs> Weird. Cool. All right. Anyway. You should feel awful having just killed and revived them in horrible ways several times there just for fun. Oh my god, you're right. I do fear horrible. It's okay. It's okay. They're back, feel... so it's morally neutral. Exactly. I don't see why it's so hard for everyone to, <laughs> to get that. Like, you bring them back alive at the end, you've washed away any kind of, like, potential negative that might have happened there. <laughs> They're alive again. Anyway. It's morally... It's, like, just even. Neutral. Can we look at the other documents? 
Uh, we've seen the other documents, yeah, but can we but look yeah. at them one last time? One yes. last time. Which is lighter than the epitaph? It seeks for everyone to try to solve the... I, I still think this is, like, a, a pretty firm message that we as the player, the mystery that we are supposed to solve is the portrait's epitaph riddle. Okay, but... That let's... is... That, that should be our goal as players of the game. Other stuff? Sure. But that's... The important thing for us. I, I I think I think that is a bit of a fourth wall nudge there. No one could Okay, okay. Alright? Yeah. And the epitaph. Behold the sweet fished river running through my beloved hometown. You who seek the golden land. Follow its path downstream in search of the key. As you travel down it, you will see a village. In that village, look for the shore the two will tell you of. There sleeps the key to the Golden Land. The one who obtains the key must then travel to the Golden Land in accordance with these rules. On the first twilight, offer the six chosen by the key as sacrifices. On the second twilight, those who remain shall tear apart the two who are close. On the third twilight, those who remain shall praise my noble name. On the fourth twilight, gouge the head and kill. On the fifth twilight, gouge the chest and kill. On the sixth twilight, gouge the stomach and kill. On the seventh twilight, gouge the knee and kill. On the eighth twilight, gouge the leg and kill. On the ninth twilight, the rich, the witch shall revive, and none shall be left alive. On the tenth twilight, at journey's end, you shall attain the power to the power of the Golden Land's treasures, once and for the last time. <clears throat> the witch shall praise the wise bestow four treasures. One shall be all the gold from the Golden Land. One shall be the resurrection of all the dead souls. One shall be the resurrection of the love that was lost. One shall be put to the wi shall be to put the witch to sleep for all time. Sleep peacefully, my beloved witch Beatrice. It's interesting that those things didn't happen, though Ava solved it. Which things? All the way at the end. Those things that are meant to occur. Right. She got all the gold. Uh, resurrection of all the dead souls. But they didn't make it to the Golden Land. Is that even related? It's interesting. Is this even related? So the wish shall praise the wise. Maybe there wasn't anyone worth praising this time around. Someone did get the gold. Yep, someone did get the gold. Um, That's interesting. That's interesting. So... <sighs> wheels within wheels. That is like the fucking theme of this playthrough. Wheels isn't it? within fucking wheels. Jesus Christ. It's wheels all the way down. I that's too many. I don't have energy for that many wheels. Anyway, see you in part four, bench. Smash, smash that like, comment and subscribe, comment and subscribe.